So I'm doing this new thing now where I'm going to talk about stuff that gave me a genuine emotional reaction, but I'm going to do it in my robe. I'll, I'll wear the tie just so you guys know if it's a positive experience up front, keep the mood properly set. Today I want to talk about the time I had at Bonnaroo Music Festival, and more importantly, the reasons why you should go, even if you have a passing interest in the event. I, I won't be discussing music festivals in general per se, as I'm not really a frequent festival goer on, on a scale of one to wook. I think I fall around a three or four, but I'm a grown man who does only get one vacation a year, two if I'm lucky, and I can honestly say that this is where I'm very happy to spend it. And just to get this up front, I do a cost breakdown of the whole event and a little bit more of a practical explanation of going on vacation to Bonnaroo. So feel free to skip to this time code if that's what you're interested in, if you don't wanna hear my personal thoughts and experiences. I attended Bonnaroo with a general admission weekend pass and I camped in group camping with a bunch of fine people uh, that we met online. Um, our group name was something like the Cult of Rufus, that's what they called it, after giving it a ridiculously uh, weird full name. I didn't do VIP nonsense, so uh, you know, I'm not going to be talking about anything you can do at Bonnaroo when you've got an infinite amount of money to spend on it. This is definitely a video on an affordable vacation, not another way for rich people to continue living easy lives. So uh, with all that said, let me introduce you to obligatorily animated me and okay he didn't didn't shave the beard like i did he's going to be our co-pilot today whenever i'm not on screen handling all of the infographics and stuff so we're very we're very glad to have him so preamble out of the way i have attended bonnaroo for the last two years and i'm going to tell you about it and why i think you should go you know if it interests you For those who haven't been down on the farm, Bonnaroo Music and Arts Festival is held every summer at Manchester, Tennessee. It lasts for four days in June, spanning the weekend, and has been going on since 2002. I myself have only attended the last two years, however, looking back at the bands who have played in the past, yeah, I'm nothing short of jealous. From what I briefly read up on it, I guess it originally hosted mainly jam bands and folk bands. However, I think anyone that has been to Bonnaroo within the years that I've gone or have known about it would probably say, Yo, Chris, I got swing trunks and my flippy floppies. Yeah, they have expanded a little bit. In fact, I can confidently say I feel like a third of the music there is EDM related, or maybe that's just my own perception. On top of what has become a diverse lineup, you can expect a litany of events, activities, such as yoga, parades. I saw karaoke there, though I did not partake, don't plan to if I see it again. You can even register to vote there, you know, if that's where you want to do that. There are endless amounts of food options, most of it essentially just being upgraded carnival food with a bit of a hipster twist on it, but hey, my, my diet's on vacation when I'm on vacation, so I'm gonna just eat a bunch of morning bender sandwiches and it's okay to be unhealthy if you're funny about it. <laughs> oh, I've got diabetes. I'm, I'm slowly withering away. Like many people attending, I camped at the festival grounds both years I went, which requires, you know, a medium to long drive on my part. It's just far enough from my house to justify the camping kind of thing. All in all, this sounds like a good time to me on the surface. A long weekend of camping, sunny weather, a lineup I can see either live for the first time or truly just listen to for the first time in general. Add to this that most of my friend group attends, I, I saw no reason not to go. Which is why I'm going to bring up some immediate deal breakers before I get into all the praise. So let's start with those. If you don't enjoy camping, you know, like the suburban kind of camping where you're not really braving the elements, you're just choosing not to sleep in a house, 
Your feelings aren't going to change on that suddenly in the hot 90 plus degree weather. I was lucky enough to camp in a Habitat this year and have air conditioning as a result, but the year before that, every morning, 8 a.m. at the latest, you're getting up because the sun is cooking you alive inside your tent. It's a music festival, so you're not going to bed at a reasonable hour, of course, and not to mention bugs, the possibility of rain, and the next deal breaker. Porta Johns. I wouldn't exactly put this on any marketing blurbs or anything, but if you can't do Porta Johns, you can't do Bonnaroo. They are the only ways you will be pooping and peeing should you camp at Bonnaroo. They have flushable Porta Johns as well. I don't know how long they've had those, uh, but a flush button is hardly an escape from the ravages of those who use them with lesser etiquette than you would. Not really a deal breaker to anyone I know exactly, but I'm sure there are some people out there uh, that hear this and they're just like, that's, that's, that's the final nail in the coffin, I can't, I can't go. Now, waiting in line to use the bathroom in a way that is truly not of God, uh, that's kind of rough, but however, the, the final issue people seem to constantly levy against Bonnaroo is actually just waiting. Security is well established and efficient, however, this makes for a slow transition between the campgrounds and the music festival grounds. Mix this with the fact that intoxicated, eager young people are not prone to have their bags and festival gear security check ready, lines tend to get a little bit long and also slow to a crawl most of the time. This wait is nothing compared to the one that occurred outside the festival though. I'm endlessly glad that me and my SO drove a Prius to the event as we ended up waiting in a slow moving line of cars for 12 hours and 20 minutes. That's not an exaggeration, that's the actual amount of time I was in a car in a line to get into Bonnaroo Music and Arts Festival. Pair this with the near eight hour drive to Manchester, 20 hours on the road is hardly a way I want to start a vacation. I need to send out my condolences to anyone who either ran out of gas, broke down, or just simply had to poop while they were in line. All three seem equally tragic to me. Now, my girlfriend took this picture that you're seeing of two guys we saw leave their car. Uh, they ran to the gas station that was about a mile away and then ran back just so they could stay in line. We saw them refuel their car. They had run out of gas in line. This was all made worse by the fact that Bonnaroo never addressed the issue on social media. So they never indicated why this was happening or how and when it would get fixed. All they posted was a picture on Instagram celebrating the fact that they had sold out tickets. Well, I guess in a roundabout sort of way, they did give us an explanation on why the line took so long. We only waited in line for about two hours the year before, so this is hardly a common thing. However, some people that have gone in the past have also said that an eight hour wait time is just one of the things that can happen. But the craziest part, I would have waited in a 12 hour line again if I knew I was going to have the weekend that I ended up having there. And I know that sounds hokey, and what I'm about to say is even more hokey, but Bonnaroo is truly an event unlike any other that I've been to. Not a big festival person again, as I said, but perhaps that's the reason why it made even more of an impact on me. And it just might be worth all of the deal breakers I've mentioned here. So let's lay those out, the positives. Following our epic 12 hour, 20 minute saga, we got our camp set up, which took another couple hours on top of that huge wait, but we were finally ready to sleep after that. From the first day, bands are playing from the early evening all the way to 4 a.m. So the musical atmosphere is immediately as inescapable as the heat. Vendors, themed camps, excited patrons, all this can be found in every section of Bonnaroo at basically any hour. Being in the group camping section, uh, here on the map, I was constantly interacting or walking past camps of dozens, some of which were highly decorated and, dare I say, creatively designed. This sort of environment kind of gave me a feeling like I was creating a pillow fort all over again. Come on guys, let's build a fort and let's camp in it for the weekend and we'll listen to our favorite bands. It's got a really just intoxicating feeling about it that I imagine is present at some other festivals, but 
definitely foreign to me and man I enjoyed it. You can easily see why uh, drug culture is so strong considering all it takes really is a canopy and a few tapestries to hide yourself away from the world. Moving on while also staying on sort of the same topic, you can tell that the drug culture at Bonnaroo is a clear influence on the peace, love, and joy hippie vibes that sort of permeate throughout the event. Everyone is eager to high five you, uh, converse while in line, ask about how your weekend's going, how your trip's going, why you're here, even just, you know, give you a happy, yeah, happy People who have been smoking, tripping, or whatever <laughs> are far more likely to shed their skin in places like this. And no, not just because they didn't wear sunscreen. Again, not for everyone, whether it be because of your morals, biology, but being able to surround yourself with people who are more concerned with having a serene, good time between each adrenaline rush that are the concerts, it makes the stress of being surrounded by so many people just kind of inexistent. Kind of. Not really, but kind of. I won't go into too much detail about uh, the concerts or the acts and how they're run and everything. I'll just assure you that I have very little to be critical about. I presume most, if not all of you watching, have been to a concert before and that is where your interest in Bonnaroo stems from. They all, from a technical standpoint, play out incredibly well. Each act is you know, well mixed. Uh, the light shows are, tend to be pretty great. Um, most acts can be enjoyed from a well-filmed Jumbotron display, which if you're a back of the crowd guy like me, highly appreciate. I could complain at how cramped and unorganized some of the stages and tents are, almost always due to the popularity of the performers. Or I could do the logical thing and see this as a sacrifice to the luxury that's needed in order to see a bunch of high profile acts for the same price as a ticket to just one of them. In order to, uh, explain a positive, I'm going to bring up what starts as a slightly negative experience. But it, I definitely think it speaks to why the atmosphere of Bonnaroo is something I enjoy so much, despite my introverted nature, especially. Now, uh, it, both of these negative experiences that I'm, yeah, there's two, uh, two negative experiences I'm gonna talk about. Uh, neither one's a huge ordeal, and I would never describe them as traumatic or even really that heartbreaking, but they were certainly stressful, and they could have ended in a much worse way. The first year me and my girlfriend went, we were at the Bon Iver show with a group of our friends when we decided to go spoil ourselves with the pre-mentioned stuffed pretzels. Definitely get them. They are worth it. We came back and our group had moved spots, unfortunately not realizing that my girlfriend's phone was on the ground. It was a dark black case and it was nearly nighttime, so no one is to blame for this. It was just a simple mistake. It turns out our group had not even seen the woman that had picked up the phone and was asking around uh, if it had belonged to anyone. It was hardly anything more than a miscommunication and an unfortunate coincidence, but it was upsetting nonetheless that my girlfriend didn't have her phone anymore. Uh, a phone which she had just gotten uh, a couple months prior, coincidentally. We were told by the Lost and Found that it would probably turn up the next day, and so we got up the next morning. Uh, we were so upset that we um, couldn't go see Eminem. You know, I'm not really an Eminem fan, neither is my girlfriend, but you know. So sure enough, uh, we get to the Lost and Found the next morning, and it's there. But this act of kindness was brought into a completely other <laughs> league when we looked at the phone and discovered that the woman who found it had gotten really close to the stage that Eminem was performing on. And uh, she used my girlfriend's phone to take a bunch of really good pictures. And uh, my girlfriend's phone was on locks, uh, but it has the ability to take pictures if you double tap the power button which these people were clearly aware of. Needless to say, we were thankful for this random act of kindness and only wish we could thank them for their consideration. Just knowing that the whole radiate positivity thing actually means something to most of the people attending is quite refreshing. And it's honestly essential to my reasons for wanting to go back next year. Um, I'm aware that many have had the opposite experience uh, with their time going there. And some, of, some people I even know have uh, had stuff go missing or stolen and they just didn't get it back. But I just feel like this is worth mentioning uh, that some of us 
I have all the reason in the world to trust patrons at Bonnaroo, you know, at least most of them. And uh, sort of leading up into this moment, this is the thing I wanted to mention last just because uh, it's a little bit heavy, but it, again, definitely not a terrible um, occurrence in the grand scheme of things. Childish Gambino performed this year and it was easily the biggest crowd I have ever seen in Senaru. And I became overwhelmed. Uh, I, I became a little too uh, confident in my ability to handle a crowd of that size. And um, when This Is America started playing, uh, that's when I kind of remember my brain going into a completely different state of mind. And I thought I was just thirsty because my camelback had run out of water, but it turns out I was having a panic attack, uh, partially brought on by the fact that I am a type one diabetic and my blood sugar had started to drop. And in that moment of weakness, I <laughs> collapsed to the ground in a crowd of nearly 90,000 people. And the response I got from the people around me was both gratifying and surprisingly, it didn't embarrass me like I feel like it would at most venues. The people around me sort of didn't know me, uh, created a sort of protective circle around me while I sat on the ground and took deep breaths. And one of them, seeing that I was sucking on my camelback straw for dear life, handed me his half bottle of Gatorade. Um, and you know, after the concert ended, I didn't get a chance to thank any of these people. And I am most regretful of that fact because in a moment of considerable weakness. These people were less concerned with seeing who I consider possibly our generation's biggest rock star. Yeah, fuck you, Kanye. And they, uh, they were worried about how I was doing and they, you know, they, they helped me. They didn't know who I was. I couldn't be thankful enough. And if you guys are watching, thank you so much. My goodness. Speaking of human decency, it would be wrong of me to not objectively break down the overall cost and appeal of Bonnaroo before I close this video out. So here's a small table of what you can expect to pay for the baseline Bonnaroo experience. I'm pulling from a few different sources when I say this as well as my own personal experience. This includes your ticket, food, travel expenses, and camping equipment as well as a bonus section for amenities which I have found means different things to different people. So take this with a grain of salt. My girlfriend and I ended up spending a little under $1,100 between the both of us uh, after it was all said and done. I would also like to make it clear that going to Bonnaroo for me is directly predicated upon the fact that a payment plan is available to buy a weekend pass, which breaks it up in a way I can easily afford. Overall, $1,100, uh, <laughs> at least to someone that makes the income I do, for a four to five day vacation in which I can see some of my favorite bands, bands I've never experienced before, hang out with all my friends and enjoy a safe environment with a litany of ways to experience it. Yeah, um, if this even remotely appeals to you, you should go. If you watch this video the whole way through, I really appreciate it. If you just skip forward to the end to see the price breakdown and everything like that, thanks for making me your source. I've linked in the description all of my sources that I use to make this video, which includes the Bonnaroo website and some travel websites. I encourage you to do your own research if there was something that I didn't cover here today. Um, stuff in my robe is something that I plan to do once a week and just kind of talk about different things that affected me very strongly and why you should either experience them or not. So all of your feedback, very much appreciated. Thanks for hanging out with me on Stuff in My Robe. I'll see you guys soon. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about God's Not Dead, the Christian movie. I'm going to cover some Christian media in this show quite often. It is trauma a strong emotional response?